The following program is sponsored by St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. No child should die in the dawn of life. That was the dream behind St. Jude Children's Research Hospital when it was founded more than 45 years ago. And it's the dream of every parent whose child is fighting for life against cancer today. Together, we can help them win. Stay with us while we share the journey of some amazing children and their battle to overcome this deadly disease. I thought I was going to bury my child. I thought she was going to die. You never think that your child will have cancer. You always think that happens to someone else. We didn't have really any hope until we came to St. Jude. You can't give up. And St. Jude and all the doctors and nurses, they don't give up. Your heart stops. The world stops. That's what happens when you learn that your child has a deadly cancer. Every second becomes precious. Every day is another day to be thankful for, another day to reach for a cure. And that's what St. Jude is all about, finding cures and saving children. And we never give up. We never give up fighting for children like little Alejandro. A few days before Christmas, two-year-old Alejandro was having headaches so severe that his pediatrician ordered a CAT scan. So the next day, the pediatrician called me. He said, uh, you need to come over with your wife because I need to talk to you. So I called my wife and I said, there's something very wrong with Alejandro. He knew. He knew. He told me. My husband. He knew there was something bad. He said, the pediatrician wants to speak with us in person now. I drove 120 miles an hour. I got to the doctor's office and he goes, look, uh, Alejandro has a brain tumor. What do you mean a brain tumor? He goes, yeah, he has a brain tumor and he needs to go into surgery tomorrow. The world stopped. This cannot be happening. At least not to us. This always happens to someone else. Alejandro was diagnosed with medulloblastoma, a deadly brain tumor, and he had emergency surgery to remove the tumor. Then his pediatrician referred Alejandro to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in an all-out effort to save his life. These people mean business. These people know what they're doing. Good job, Alejandro. Let me show to you. Okay. okay, it's nothing. I had the first meeting with the oncologists, and they said, look, you know, this is what it is, this is what he has, this is what we're going to do, and this is why it needs to be done. They're the answer to the prayers. He's a very cheerful boy. He's smiling, he's playing, he likes to sing. Okay. I see Alejandro, who's a little two and a half year old kid who, who has a central line, who gets put in chemo. They take blood samples every other day and MRIs and they put them to sleep and they do all the stuff and the little guy just wakes up the next day with a smile. <laughs> Today, Alejandro and his parents are celebrating two big events, his third birthday and the end of chemotherapy and radiation. They're just waiting for the result of the final MRI, and then they'll be headed home for three months. But a phone call from Alejandro's doctor suddenly changes everything. There's a relapse. Uh, found a tumor on his spine, spinal cord. There we had our bags packed. The day of his birthday, also. We had gifts and pictures for all the nurses. So it was hard. We're starting all over again. We just have to regroup and realign ourselves. Quitting is not an option. Pray for the best. Here goes one more test. But it needs to be done. Uh, 
Así, mira, con la cabeza acá. You know, we're taking one day at a time. Eso. It's in the hands of these scientists, these doctors. So it's just a huge army of, of people built of hope and love and caring. And Saint Jude basically means hope. You hope for the research, you hope for the contributions, you hope for for these doctors. The definition of hope is Saint Jude. That's Alejandro's story. Alejandro's fighting spirit is shared by everyone at St. Jude. The doctors, the nurses, the researchers, and people like you, our partners in hope. We never give up. And it's how Alejandro and his parents keep fighting against all odds. But they can't do it alone. Please, help save a child like Alejandro. Become a partner in hope today. Call right now and become a St. Jude partner in hope. Your commitment of $19 a month will help save children's lives. We treat children from all 50 states and around the world. And for many of them, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is their only hope. When a family comes through the doors here, the first thing we want to do is give them hope. And the first thing we say is, we're going to do everything we can to save your child. St. Jude depends on your support for the research and treatments these children need today. No child is ever turned away because of the family's inability to pay. That's why your call right now is so important. I see the children that they're helping today and that could be my grandchild tomorrow. Our research breakthroughs have helped more than triple the survival rate for childhood cancers. St. Jude even covers the cost of travel, food and housing for a parent and child. It's the very first pediatric institution ever to put research and treatment under one roof. And every discovery made at St. Jude is shared freely with doctors and scientists worldwide. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. Just $19 a month will help find the cures to save children's lives. God bless our partners in hope. We'd be lost without them. I have to do something. We all have to do something. These are our children. Call now and join thousands of Americans who are St. Jude Partners in Hope with your commitment of just $19 a month. If you prefer, a generous gift of any size right now will help save children's lives. You can even make your payments automatically using your debit or credit card. It's convenient and it saves money so more goes directly to the kids. In these times when it's tough, I, I think it's even more important to give. Please. The children are counting on you. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope today. Hi, I'm Tony Thomas. My father, entertainer Danny Thomas, founded St. Jude Children's Research Hospital nearly 50 years ago. And I'm following in my dad's footsteps, working with family and friends to help fulfill his dream that no child should die in the dawn of life. I also followed my dad's footsteps into show business, producing movies and television series. One of the TV shows I produced was The Golden Girls, and I had the privilege of working with Betty White. Betty is still a dear friend today, and she was eager to help the kids of St. Jude and share with you an important story of one child's amazing courage and the battle that goes on every day at St. Jude. Neuroblastoma, Wilms tumor, osteosarcoma, these aggressive cancers are no laughing matter. And the kids at St. Jude fight these cancers every day. That's why St. Jude researchers are always working to find new treatments to help these kids survive and thrive. The child you're about to meet warms my heart. He's a real fighter. Could take a big bath for me. Brandon has osteosarcoma, the most common form of bone cancer in children. Let me see your mouth. Your mouth. The cancer was found in his knee. When Brandon arrived at St. Jude, doctors had to move quickly in order to save his life. Feeling okay? How's your leg? Sorry. Show me that leg. They had no choice but to amputate his leg. Brandon's grandmother remembers the day he was diagnosed in their hometown and the long drive to St. Jude. When they diagnosed him, I didn't want to believe it. I said, Brandon? Cancer? No. I 
I just kept praying. But I just kept praying. Oh. I prayed all night. We got up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I prayed. I prayed all down the highway. When I walked into St. Jude, and when I stepped in that front door, it was just like a burden fell off me. It was just like a spiritual thing. I want to just shout glory out of them. Immediately after Brandon arrived at St. Jude, doctors discovered that his cancer had spread to his lung. Before his amputation, he had to undergo a lung operation to remove any signs of tumor. But for this brave seven-year-old, the battle is just beginning. He now faces 20 weeks of intensive chemotherapy. I'm proud to meet his father. Very proud. He's the strongest person I ever met in my life. He's like a hero to me. Full of life. So he's just a very happy kid. Love everyone and everyone loves him. Okay, okay. He's okay while the cast is on. But when you take the cast off, he don't like to look at his hip. He don't want to look at it. That's why he kept saying, I'm scared, I'm scared. He's scared of it. Brandon had told us that he was afraid if he looked down that he would see his leg. It's actually called phantom limb sensation because sometimes they can feel pain or they just feel like their leg is there. He was absolutely terrified. It's just amazing what they have to go through. A week later, it's time for Brandon to be measured for his permanent prosthesis. Once again, he must confront his fears. Right. And are you still looking at it here? You are? Okay. Today was awesome breakthrough for Brandon. That he looked at his leg and he accepted that it was his leg. There it is. Your leg. He would touch it, which helps with uh, desensitizing his leg. Okay, now roll over on your side, face daddy. So today was just a phenomenal breakthrough for him. It's barely been a month since surgery took Brandon's leg. But today, he is determined to take his first steps. We just have to practice on his feet. I'd really like you to be able to walk without your crutches, okay? Me too. You would? When I saw him walk for the first time, I was just amazed. It was just like a gift from God, like seeing your baby walk for the first time. Very nice. Those close to Brandon agree that his dream to run and play sports again will come true. But because the cancer spread to his lung, the path to long-term survival is more difficult and more dangerous. You couldn't be at no better place than St. Jude. There's just so much love here. It's real. That's why I thank God for St. Jude. Every day of my life. This is a wonderful place. It breaks my heart to tell you, Brandon lost his battle with cancer. But because of the treatment he received at St. Jude before he died, he was able to return to being the great kid he always was, full of life and energy. He became an honor student, and he was able to enjoy two more precious years riding his bike, playing his video games, and loving his family. In memory of Brandon, and for every child still fighting to live, Become a St. Jude partner in hope today. Imagine your doctor tells you that your child only has months to live, that the small red dots on his arm aren't chicken pox, but a rare terminal bone disease. As a father and a grandfather myself, I can't imagine hearing such a terrible prognosis. But for Liam, and his parents, giving up isn't an option. Undo, please. 
Liam is diagnosed with myelodysplastic syndrome, which is called MDS. Basically, all of his cells, red, white, and platelets, weren't forming correctly, and they're missing their seventh chromosome. I think two in a million children get it. I had asked, is it survivable? And they said, no, not really. It was over the phone that we were told it. And I thought, maybe I heard it wrong, or maybe I asked it wrong. I said, not really survivable? And they said, no. It was basically, he's going to die soon. Regina and her husband desperately searched the internet for help and any sign of hope. We came across a lot of different websites and a lot of different hospitals and organizations, but the only one that showed any survival rates at all was St. Jude. Right. We can make a magic trick to make you look like okay, what? Within a week, Liam was referred to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, where he received a bone marrow transplant. Doctors at St. Jude have pioneered the use of these transplants for the treatment of MDS. They were experienced with this kind of disorder, and as rare as it is, that's a big deal. They had some things in mind that would specifically help him and increase his chances. Liam is energetic. He's fearless. He always is laughing. He doesn't seem to notice that he has cancer. And again, any marks? Get set, go. <laughs> He likes to make up stories, he likes to make up songs, and he will become any character that he wants to. Dr. Liam. Things can go bad very quickly, we've learned. A couple weeks ago, we started having seizures. His brain had started swelling. They had people come in and immediately take care of him. I try very hard to not cry in front of him, but once in a while, you can't not cry and he'll come over and wipe away my tears and give me a hug and kiss, and it melts your heart. This visit marks the third year since Liam's bone marrow transplant. But it's still too early in the battle for Liam to claim victory. That's Stephanie. Her name is Stephanie, and she's my girlfriend. Liam has made a lot of friends. Because she's my girlfriend, and she's going to And Stephanie had her transplant um, for AML, which is similar. It's a form of leukemia. I love Liam. I can't see your name on it. And he just loves to know that he gets to see her. <laughs> Still breaks my heart, because whenever I start to talk to him about her at home, his response a lot of the times is, did she die? Touch my finger. Touch your nose. Finger. Before we came here, we were told Liam would die. Finger, nose. I'm going to put M-O-M on it. St. Jude said it was survivable. And they were willing to try and treat him when other places weren't. So we're just eternally grateful for this place. Only two in a million children get myelodysplastic syndrome. Most do not survive. But thanks to St. Jude, Liam's family has had three more precious years with him. But the relapse rate for MDS is 75%, and it could return at any time. That's why we will keep fighting for Liam. I invite you to join us to help children like Liam. Please become a St. Jude Partner in Hope today. Life is a gift, even more so for a child battling cancer. That's why the doctors and the scientists working together at St. Jude are so important. St. Jude was the first pediatric institution ever to put research and treatment under one roof. I've supported St. Jude for years. I've personally seen the real hope families get at St. Jude, even when the odds are stacked so high against them. You're going to love this little guy. Meet Hayden. Mama. If my hair comes back, can I dye it blue? Light blue or dark blue? Light blue. Light blue? Hayden has been diagnosed with ATRT, a typical teratoid rhabdoid tumor. It is located in the back of the brain. 
very serious. There is no cure. They snuck in another appointment on us. He's doing good. He's, he's tough. Uh, I cry a lot here. But it's not a depressing place at all. Because around here, kids are number one. He's been feeling pretty lousy. The chemo's really hit him hard this time. And uh, he's been in a lot of pain. Past three nights, he's been up all night getting sick. His stomach is just basically raw on the inside. They call it high-dose chemotherapy. It's probably one of the highest doses anybody gets. Extremely dangerous. Although there's no cure for ATRT, a bone marrow transplant can save Hayden's life. Today, he is having his own marrow harvested. And then, after the marrow is tested and Hayden is given intense chemotherapy, doctors at St. Jude will use this marrow for his transplant. It's been six months since Hayden's harvest and transplant. Today, he is back at St. Jude for therapy, a hearing test, and a check of his cognitive skills. But more importantly, he's here for an MRI of his spine and his brain to see if there are any signs of tumor. He really looks the best we've seen him look in a long time. But in the same sense, it's scary. Just because we know he looks good doesn't mean things are good on the inside. Hayden and his parents finally get the news they've been so anxiously waiting for. There's no evidence of, uh, of tumor. Yeah. It looks good. <laughs> <laughs> Today, Hayden is going home to his family and friends. But in three months, he'll be back at St. Jude for more tests to see if the cancer has returned. We've got to find some way to beat this cancer. You don't know when you're going to be in my shoes. Well, it may not be your own child. It may be your best friend's child. It may be your grandchild. But chances are, at some point, this is going to touch somebody in your life. No child ever, ever should have to go through this. We are still hoping that, that there's a miracle around the corner. Three months later, Hayden is back at St. Jude. What did you want for your birthday? A snake. His face is swollen because of the drugs to release pressure on his brain. The tumor is growing again. And this time, nothing has been able to stop the cancer. We went to see the hockey game. Whenever we can, we'll, we'll go do something fun. Hayden already knows that at this point, there is no drug that's going to make the tumor go away. He knows what's going to happen. Sometimes he'll get scared and he'll cry, but Hayden also has a deep faith and he knows that he's going to be in heaven with his other friends that from here that have passed on. He knows that there won't be any more pain and We've told him when his time is ready, it's time for him to go. He needs to go. Despite our best efforts to save his life, Hayden lost his battle. Towards the end, he just handled everything with such grace and dignity, and he was just so brave. He wanted to help other kids. He knew how hard it was to have cancer, and he would never want anybody else to have to go through what he went through. We would do anything for our hospital. There is hope. Not every child has to lose their life to cancer. There's no cure yet for the kind of brain tumor that claimed Hayden's young life. But St. Jude is leading the way to finding one, and it will happen one day because of people like you all over the country who really care about these children, our partners in hope. We're all in this fight together, so join us today. These children need every member of our team to help them win their battle against cancer. Many have come to St. Jude because they have nowhere else to turn. 
children like Gracie, who was just a year old when doctors in her hometown discovered a tumor in her brain. They told us that it had spread to her spine, and they said there's really nothing we can do. They said a disease was terminal. Yeah. Can you say airplane? Airplane. Very good. On a friend's advice, Gracie's parents sent her medical records and scans to St. Jude. And within a few hours, Gracie's dad got a call from St. Jude on his cell phone. Our team of doctors and scientists had encouraging news. We found that the cancer had not spread to her spine. We were picking out songs for her funeral. I was crying, and I was giving her a thumbs up, and I was saying, it's Memphis, and they don't see the tumor on her spine and that gave us the first glimmer of hope. Gracie spent the next 12 months at St. Jude, undergoing more than 30 rounds of three-dimensional conformal radiation, a cutting-edge procedure that attacks the tumor while protecting healthy areas of a young developing brain like Gracie's. She has a brain tumor. Well, the brain tumor experts are at St. Jude, and they deal with this every single day. They see hundreds of cases it's hard to explain to a two-year-old that bad tasting medicine will make you feel better or a needle is going to make you feel better in a little bit, but she's been a trooper through it all. That's the first thing we said is thank you for that hope you gave us because we did not have any until we came here. Two years after diagnosis, Gracie is celebrating her third birthday cancer-free. It's hard to believe that Gracie is the same little girl whose parents had picked out songs for her funeral all those months ago. Look at her. Her head is held up straight. She just has a glow about her. What do you always wear? Um, pink gas. These are days she wasn't supposed to have. Two years down the road, uh, you know, we're well past her third birthday. I think of that every night and I tuck her in. I can't tell you how proud I am as a mom. I, I can't imagine going through what I've watched her go through. She's done it as a baby, as a two-year-old. Had it not been for St. Jude, we would not have her today. This hospital has fought for Grace. Grace has fought diligently and she's just remained so strong and I just look at her and marvel at that. Run through these halls two years later, it's miraculous. You can help save a child's life. Call right now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. Just $19 a month will help provide breakthrough research, treatments, and cures. We help children from all 50 states and around the world. And for many of them, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is their only hope. It takes all of us to make this happen. The doctors, the scientists, and the partners in hope. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital began as the dream of one man, Danny Thomas. My father's dream simply was that no child should die in the dawn of life. And that's what we're all still working toward. St. Jude is doing great things. And they are on the cutting edge of the new technology. Our research breakthroughs have helped more than triple the survival rate for childhood cancers. When St. Jude opened, only four out of a hundred children survived the most common childhood cancer. Today, 94% of kids with that disease get to go home and keep growing. No child is ever turned away for a family's inability to pay. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. Just $19 a month will help find the cures to save children's lives. Call now and join thousands of Americans who are St. Jude Partners in Hope with your commitment of just $19 a month. If you prefer, a generous gift of any size right now will help save children's lives. You can even make your payments automatically using your debit or credit card. It saves money, so more of your donation goes directly to help children. $19 a month is less than a dollar a day. It's such a little bit that does such a lot. Becoming a monthly partner in hope 
could be one of the most meaningful things you ever do. But if your circumstances change, you can cancel at any time and know you've made a difference. Please, children's lives depend on you. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope today. As a parent, you do everything to protect your child from harm. But how do you protect your child from brain cancer? Especially one of the rarest and most deadly of all. I can't imagine something so heartbreaking. But when Peter's family came through the doors of St. Jude facing this crisis, the first thing they were given was what they needed most, hope. Peter's mom and dad were clinging to hope the night they walked through the doors of St. Jude, knowing their two-year-old son had a brain tumor. It was definitely one of the worst, worst nights of my life. Pete's tumor is extremely rare, kind of rarest of the rare. Pete has pineoblastoma, a fast-growing cancer located in the third ventricle of his brain. It was a huge shock. My shock turned into, what are we going to do about this? Neurosurgeons removed 95% of Pete's tumor. And then our doctors and scientists went to work to shrink the remaining tumor and keep it from coming back. This is a, a, an extremely rare tumor, extremely aggressive tumor, okay? A tumor that can spread to other places. We have made significant improvement in the results of therapy in the way to approach these tumors step by step. He will have 20 weeks of chemotherapy, and then he will have six weeks of conformal radiation, and then another 20 weeks of chemo. I read book, Dada. You want to read a book? What does a dinosaur sound like? <laughs> That's right. I try to take it one day at a time. Try not to think one way or the other what his outcome's gonna be. Uh, I try not to think that far ahead. I feel like my job now is just to spend as much time with my son as possible. Slide that in there. We have something to believe in. Miracles do happen here. It's an amazing, wonderful place to be. Give me a high five. All right. Good job. He is a great little patient. He sees the doctors come in and he lifts up his shirt so that they can listen to his heart. He, he's quite a character. It is quite a character. One can only feel honored in participating in his care. Still sleeping? Well, today he's uh, getting another dose of radiation. Basically, you want to reduce damage to areas that don't have tumors. These machines can pinpoint where the radiation has to go. It's a true blessing to be able to take care of these children and provide them with the best available technology. We were given a break in Peter's treatment, so we were able to come home for three weeks and kind of reminds us how much we really miss home. We went on the swings and did the slide a bit and then we walked down to the duck pond. While Pete is out here running around in the grass, we have researchers back at St. Jude helping to figure out what steps to take next and how to make him better. You try to stay positive, but you kind of have to face the reality of the situation. The odds are stacked against them. Grab it down on the stem down here. Pick it, pick it for Mama. We will fight and we'll do everything we can to keep him here. Uh, you know, he's my little boy and uh, I love him to pieces. How do you keep your kids safe from a brain tumor? I can't protect them from that. All I can do is give him the best treatment available. We didn't have really any hope until we came to St. Jude. You can't give up. And St. Jude and all the doctors and nurses, they don't give up. Bye. You really don't know how many more times uh, they have to play together. It makes me uh, kind of upset to think about it. His, his time here with us may be limited, so, you know, we have to live in the moment, live it to the fullest while we can.
Today, Peter is in remission. He's doing what kids do best, playing, going to school, loving his family. But if his cancer returns, it will most likely spread quickly. St. Jude researchers have not yet found the cure that will stop recurrent pineoblastoma. But we'll never give up trying, and I know you won't either. Join me. Help save kids like Peter. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope today. Whenever I meet children fighting cancer, I come away inspired and truly humbled by their bravery and their determination. And I want to do everything I can to help St. Jude save their lives. Here's a great little fighter named Colin. When Colin was just two years old, he developed cancer of the central nervous system. He had an ependymoma tumor on the fourth ventricle of his brain that extended down onto his spine. The tumor was so massive, it compressed many of the nerves that control swallowing, speech. And all you can think of is, how could this beautiful child be one who's afflicted with a tumor? Doctors moved quickly to remove the tumor and Colin was referred to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. We weren't able to tell whether or not he would walk again, whether he would be able to swallow and even open his mouth or move his tongue. St. Jude doctors and scientists are part of a unique clinical trial designed to save the lives of children stricken with this rare disease. Hey, Colin. Oh, do you need kisses and hugs? Colin, hey, buddy. St. Jude is everything to me right now because they've given us hope. Is that Daddy? Are you pointing at Daddy? I can't even count how many times where we felt like he might not pull through the day. There have been many of those days. Treatment for Colin includes a combination of chemotherapy and radiation designed to shrink and kill all traces of the tumor. Having the disease has taken its toll on Colin. Colin can't talk, so most of the communication is with our eyes. That's pretty powerful. Where's your nose? Is that your nose? Yeah? He's trapped, but he's emerging. I see that there's a part of him that's still in his mind very active and wanting to come out. Do you see the butterfly on there? Yeah? Do you like Carissa's rainbow? Colin, blow a kiss. Blow a kiss. He's an amazing child. He's charming, playful. He's a very determined child. <laughs> if I seize upon enjoying every possible moment I can with him and looking forward to tiny little victories, if we can share some happiness, then that can never be taken away. Good job! He's gone from partial paralysis to having multiple brain surgeries, wondering if he's ever going to move again, to a child who's like that little engine who just keeps pushing forward, who just refuses to quit. <laughs> While everyone is excited about Colin's little victories in physical therapy, the battle to kill the tumor and save his life continues. Today, Colin had an MRI, and his parents wait anxiously for the results. It's going to tell us if the chemo has made the tumor shrink. With a penomoma, it's a very persistent type of tumor. And if you leave any remnants, it has such a high chance of coming back. The MRI confirms that the tumor has gotten smaller. So this is good. But there's more good news as Colin reaches an important milestone. He has started really trying to talk. It's, it's very exciting. He will sometimes spontaneously use words I didn't even know that he knew. What is this? <laughs> He's back. I mean, that boy is back. Keep going. You're going to see them all the way. That's right. That's right. Colin continues to surprise everyone as he takes his first tentative steps since the tumor was removed. To be at this point where 
we have our son back is amazing. You can do it. This is really the kid that we knew before all this started. Yeah. Yeah. Good job! He's made a tremendous recovery. It's possible there's a remnant of the tumor left on the brain stem. That last little bit is, is a stubborn little bit. We have some of the hardest decisions you could ever imagine on the horizon. I don't know where else in the world we could get this care. You can see why brain tumors are so terrifying for a family to endure. And tragically, they're the second most common form of childhood cancer after leukemia. But for a child facing that battle, there's no place like St. Jude. They've treated children from all over, never turning anyone away because of a family's inability to pay, even providing transportation, food, housing, and always hope. But they can only do it with your help. Please join us as a St. Jude Partner in Hope. Call right now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. Your commitment of $19 a month will help save children's lives. We treat children from all 50 states and around the world. And for many of them, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is their only hope. When a family comes through the doors here, the first thing we want to do is give them hope. And the first thing we say is, we're going to do everything we can to save your child. St. Jude depends on your support for the research and treatments these children need today. No child is ever turned away because of the family's inability to pay. That's why your call right now is so important. Until those beds are empty, we have to keep giving to St. Jude. It's an investment in a child's future. Our research breakthroughs have helped more than triple the survival rate for childhood cancers. St. Jude even covers the cost of travel, food, and housing for a parent and child. It's the very first pediatric institution ever to put research and treatment under one roof. And every discovery made at St. Jude is shared freely with doctors and scientists worldwide. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. Just $19 a month will help find the cures to save children's lives. God bless our partners in hope. We'd be lost without them. Every single gift means help for another child. Call now and join thousands of Americans who are St. Jude Partners in Hope with your commitment of just $19 a month. If you prefer, a generous gift of any size right now will help save children's lives. You can even make your payments automatically using your debit or credit card. It's convenient and it saves money so more goes directly to the kids. Each and every gift is incredibly important. Please, the children are counting on you. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope today. One of the most amazing things about St. Jude is the love they give to every child. They may be fighting for their lives, but they can also have fun. Just being kids. Just watch Dagan. Just a minute. Okay. Who is it? It's a tea party. Spend the afternoon with four-year-old Dagan, and you're liable to have a hard time keeping up with him. He not only has an active imagination, he never seems to run out of energy. It's hard to believe he has cancer, but he does. It's acute myeloid leukemia, the deadliest leukemia a child can get. Dagan was first treated in his hometown in Kansas. They got Dagan into remission and gave him a bone marrow transplant. But he relapsed. It was then that his parents turned to St. Jude Children's Research Hospital for help. There you go. When you realize that your child may not be here tomorrow, then you kind of have a different perspective on what today means. And it has given, you know, hope to our family that maybe Dagan will make it. He's sick, but you would never know it. 
He acts like a normal child, and he knows he has cancer. He knows he's sick. Ah, nice warm blanket. And still, he gets up every day happy, running around, full of energy. Oh, look at that one. He likes me. Mommy, here's the people. The medical team at St. Jude was able to get Dagan into a second remission. And once again, he is going to receive a bone marrow transplant that will, hopefully, keep him in remission and lead to a cure. Everything ready. This transplant is different than before. St. Jude pioneered a technique that lets parents who are only a partial match be a donor for their child. In this case, Dagan's dad. It's called a haploidentical transplant, and it holds new promise for kids like Dagan. They are finding cures, and, and they're making improvements, and they're doing research and doing experiments that no other hospital is doing. It's been over six months since Dagan's transplant. He's here this week for his regular checkup to make sure he's still cancer-free. But there's something that has his mother worried. Dagan was complaining about his leg hurting him, and that has been a trademark in terms of when he was first diagnosed and then when he relapsed. If he continues to complain about leg pain, then I'm going to be very concerned because then he could be relapsing. Samples are being taken of Dagan's bone marrow. It's an extremely stressful time for Dagan's parents and the team at St. Jude because they've run out of options. If the transplant hasn't worked, there is nothing else that can be done to save him. Twenty-four hours later, Test results confirm everyone's worst fear. The cancer is back. Dagan has relapsed. His parents decide to take him home, where he will spend his final days. Happy birthday! Friends and family gather for a birthday party. Dagan would have been five years old today. We talked to him very openly about going to be an angel and going to be in heaven. He got really sad one day because he thought, how is my blanket and my trains going to be up there? The day before he passed away, I told Dagan that we loved him, that mommy and daddy were in the room with him. He took our hands. At this point, he was no longer talking. He wasn't moving. He wasn't even opening his eyes, but he took our hands and squeezed them with his, and then he pulled them closer above his heart. I believe someday St. Jude will find the magical cure that treats pediatric AML. I'm not going to give up hope. Now, more than ever, the research is so important to us. They gave us um, 10 months of a life with our son that we wouldn't have. Lance and I will continue for the rest of our lives to raise money for St. Jude to find a cure. Treasured memories of an angel like Dagan. They inspire us and motivate the doctors and scientists and researchers at St. Jude to double their efforts to find cures so that children like Dagan don't have to die. But St. Jude depends on you to help make that happen. Please, call today and become a partner in hope right now. At St. Jude, no child is ever turned away because of a family's inability to pay. That's how important every young life is to us. St. Jude covers all the treatments, whatever's needed to help save a child's life. And we also pay for travel, meals, and housing for a child and a parent. For Ariana, that kind of support is vital because she's fighting a very aggressive brain cancer. Enrique was stationed in Japan with the U.S. Navy when his daughter Ariana was born. He called her his little princess. But when she was two years old, she started having convulsions. A series of tests revealed a mass in Ariana's brain. The family was flown back to the United States for more tests. 
They were in their doctor's office when they got the diagnosis. My daughter was diagnosed with atypical teratoid reptoid tumor, ATRT. And he said, I'm sorry to be the one to tell you this. It's very rare and it's gonna be very difficult to treat. They gave her 16 months to live. He says, I would just take her home and make her comfortable and make a lot of memories. Unwilling to accept this death sentence, Enrica and Leticia spent hours on the internet researching ATRT and the work being done by Dr. Amar Gajar at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. They asked their doctor to refer Ariana to St. Jude, and the very next day, Leticia got the phone call that she had been praying for. And he said, this is Dr. Gajar from St. Jude. And I, the phone dropped, and my husband was like, what's wrong? And I was like, it's, I, first, I couldn't even talk at first, and I was like, it's, Dr. Gajar is on the phone. Ten hours later, Ariana was admitted as a patient at St. Jude. Currently, there is no cure for ATRT, but St. Jude has developed a protocol that combines chemotherapy and radiation that will hopefully keep Ariana alive while researchers at St. Jude search for a cure. She has completed 31 radiation treatments and has done great. We wait three weeks <laughs> for the next round of chemo. Anna's a character. She is your next little actress. She is a princess every day of the week. She runs to her closet, she picks out a new outfit. No matter how bad your day is, she will make it better. Today they're doing an MRI, they're doing an EKG, and they're doing a, a spinal tap. The lumbar puncture is to make sure there's no cancer cells. And uh, the MRI is to see how much the radiation helps. Today's results are critical. If the tumor has grown, there are few options left for Ariana. Her chances for survival would be greatly reduced. Dr. Kajar arrives with the results. Okay, the scans are very good. Okay. You're good, you're good, you're good. While there is a lot to be grateful for, a new issue has surfaced that has Ariana's parents worried. I remember just seeing how withdrawn she was and how uncomfortable she was with all the little girls. There was four and they all had hair. A couple days later, my cousin came into town and she took a picture of Ariana and she looked at her and she said, look at it. She's like, you look so pretty. And she went to show her the picture and Anna looked at her and said, that's not pretty, I don't have hair. That night, we came home, I went into my bedroom, I put my hair in a ponytail, and I just cut it off. In the morning, she just looked up at me like a deer in headlights. And I said, what's the matter? And she said, where'd your hair go? I said, well, now I'm beautiful like you. And she said, you're the best mama ever. What's she gonna do? She was a royal princess. And she said, thank you guys for making me feel better. Finally, the day everyone has been waiting for. Ariana's last day of chemotherapy. We had a party fit for a princess. They sing a No More Chemo song. It's in the smile on her face. Oh, the smile. I thought I was going to bury my child. I thought she was going to die. What people need to realize is it doesn't happen to other people. It can happen to you. It can happen to your best friend. It can happen to your sister. It can happen to anybody that you love. I want to say to please become a partner in hope because there's kids out there that need you. I love you, Dad. save a child's life. Call right now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. Just $19 a month will help provide breakthrough research, treatments, and cures. We help children from all 50 states and around the world. And for many of them, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is their only hope. It takes all of us to make this happen. The doctors, the scientists, 
and the Partners in Hope. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital began as the dream of one man, Danny Thomas. My father's dream simply was that no child should die in the dawn of life. And that's what we're all still working toward. People think if I don't have a lot to give, then what I give isn't going to matter. It matters. Every single penny matters. That little part that you're playing, you know, is combined with everybody else. And it helps to truly make a difference. Our research breakthroughs have helped more than triple the survival rate for childhood cancers. When St. Jude opened, only four out of a hundred children survived the most common childhood cancer. Today, 94% of kids with that disease get to go home and keep growing. No child is ever turned away for a family's inability to pay. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. Just $19 a month will help find the cures to save children's lives. Call now and join thousands of Americans who are St. Jude Partners in Hope with your commitment of just $19 a month. If you prefer, a generous gift of any size right now will help save children's lives. You can even make your payments automatically using your debit or credit card. It saves money, so more of your donation goes directly to help children. Every dime counts, and it makes a difference. There's not a greater place in the world, as far as I'm concerned, to send your money to. Becoming a monthly partner in hope could be one of the most meaningful things you ever do. But if your circumstances change, you can cancel at any time and know you've made a difference. Please, children's lives depend on you. Call now and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope today. Every day there are thousands of children fighting for their lives with St. Jude by their sides. What if one of them was your child? You'd do everything you could to help save their life. That's why it's so important to become a St. Jude Partner in Hope. You can help find cures and save lives. All it takes is a quick phone call. Join us today. Together we can work toward the day when children with cancer can all go home with their moms and dads. Healthy, hopeful, and full of life. I thought I was going to bury my child. I thought she was going to die. You never think that your child will have cancer. You always think that happens to someone else. We didn't have really any hope until we came to St. Jude. These people mean business. These people know what they're doing. Good job, Alejandro. They're the answer to the prayers. Around here, kids are number one. Had it not been for St. Jude, we would not have her today. We're just eternally grateful for this place. You can't give up. And St. Jude and all the doctors and nurses, they don't give up. Our phone lines will remain open after the program ends. To learn more about St. Jude, go to www.stjude.org. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding Cures, Saving Children. The preceding program was sponsored by St. Jude Children's Research Hospital.